Have you ever been to one of those festivals or conferences where people are traveling and gathering from absolutely all over the shop? I'm talking cross country, I'm talking international, I'm talking people rocking up from places that you've never heard of before, but you definitely want to go visit afterwards. You know that moment when you're all finally there together in one space? There's an anticipation, an expectation, an excitement. It's unspoken, but you all know something incredible is about to happen. But now what? You see, the time that's firmly rooted in my memory actually only happened last year. It was the last ever night of Soul Survivor. After 27 years of the festival, this was it. It was coming to an end and we were all gathered together in the big top. And those of you who are there, you'll remember. The heavens opened. Thunder was roaring, lightning was striking down upon the campsite and extraordinarily heavy rain was starting to pour out of nowhere. This was it. Soul Survivor was over, so Jesus was returning. Not quite, but God did move in a powerful way that night. You see, for whatever reason, God consistently makes his presence known at these kind of events. And I actually think I have the answer for the reason for that. When we gather together in Jesus' name, with no other agenda other than spend time with him, to be in his presence, of course the Holy Spirit makes his presence known. But this hasn't always been the case, or at least not exactly like this. And you might be thinking right now, that's not the case right here, right now. Matt, we can't gather together. Why are you even reminding us of this fact right now? Well, there is a very, very good reason, and I will get to that. But first, I want to tell you the story about the first time this ever happened. So why don't you join me in turning and reading Acts chapter 2 together. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. You see where this is going? Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came and rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Guys, this was it. This was the original. The Holy Spirit poured out for all who had gathered in Jesus' name. But how do we know that these guys weren't just tripping? Well, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one had heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes and the Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygria and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? What does this mean? Or as we're asking, now what? Friends, this was an incredible moment for the history of humanity. As Rich touched upon at our last movement online gathering, Jesus had just pieced the scenes, departing the disciples, returning to heaven, but leaving them with a promise. The promise of the Holy Spirit. Understandably, the disciples were probably rather confused, a little bit lost, nervous, excited, full of anticipation, but also hesitant. All the emotions, you name it, they were feeling it. 
much like many of us are today. As our lives are consistently and continuously changing to the world around us, to the conditions, the lockdowns, the restrictions, everything that's going on. But this was a moment. The original moment, you could say, when thinking back and comparing to the stories that came to mind earlier, God was doing something new. Now friends, I think there's something so simple yet so significant about that last verse in the first passage. In verse 4 we hear that all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. All of them, every single one of them, no matter who they were, no matter what they had done, they were there present and gathered in Jesus' name and therefore they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know about you because you may be super holy, but this is definitely great news for myself. All it took for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit was to be gathered in Jesus' name and to receive his promise. And that's available to you. Later in this passage, Peter tells the crowd, you remember the crowd who were amazed and perplexed, asking each other, what does this mean? Well, he tells them, repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Friends, repent means to turn in love towards Jesus. Turn to Jesus and receive forgiveness for all your sins, all your mistakes and bad decisions. And you will also receive this incredible gift of the Holy Spirit. Now that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. But did you catch that last bit just on the end of the verse? As they began to do something amazing, speaking In other tongues, it was the Spirit that enabled them. Something incredible happened. In fact, they were doing something incredible, but only because the Spirit enabled them to do so. So what does this mean for us today? Well, we can't really gather in our churches or for worship nights um, right now, especially not for those huge conferences and festivals. People aren't travelling from those places that you've never heard of before and you're definitely not going out to visit them. We're not travelling internationally, we're not really even travelling across the country to be together right now. Does that mean we're missing out on God's presence, on his power, on, on his Holy Spirit and on those incredible, indescribable moments? Of course not. Because yet again, God is doing something new. You see, one of the crazy things about the Holy Spirit is that he doesn't just rock up at these huge events. He doesn't just make his presence known when we are all gathered together. Rather, his presence is present every day. Have you ever noticed that in the early days of the church, whenever anyone did anything cool, whenever anyone did anything significant, it's documented that the Holy Spirit fell upon them. The Holy Spirit rested upon them. The Holy Spirit filled them. Because it's clear to me that more often than not, for these guys, the early church, it can't have been this Pentecost-esque, big, huge, fantastic, crazy encounter every time but rather an opportunity to step out in their faith, knowing that God was with them every day. And you're invited to do the same. As you continue to read the book of Acts, you see the early church begin to answer this now what question. Because although Jesus, their Lord, their teacher and their friend had departed them to return to heaven, He kept his promise, as he always does. That Acts 1 verse 8 promise that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
So why don't we answer that question, just like the early church did, like the early apostles, the disciples, those guys who were living it out. In this strange old time where there's guaranteed to be some more twists and turns. There's guaranteed to be more changes to the rules, changes to the restrictions. Our lives are continuously shifting and changing. When we might not be gathered how we used to be, how we want to be gathered, there's still an anticipation. There's still an expectation and there's definitely something to be excited about. It may well be unspoken, but something incredible is still going to happen. As God is doing something new. Let us receive that power that comes from the Holy Spirit. And let us be his witnesses, led by his spirit to the ends of the earth. So that when the world says, Now what? Let us simply say, come Holy Spirit. And friends, we're going to do that right here, right now. Why don't you join me? And if you feel comfortable, maybe lay out your hands as if to receive this gift from your Father in heaven. And let's pray together. Come Holy Spirit. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for all that you have poured out for us, all that you have done for us, that Jesus would die on the cross. And that even when he departed and returned to heaven, he promised the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I thank you that you always keep your promises. So right now, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lead us by your Spirit guide us, equip us and resource us, Lord, to do the good works that you have for each and every one of us so that we may be your witnesses wherever we are and to the ends of the earth. Lord, right now we simply come before you and ask that you pour out your spirit afresh. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and move in our lives, move in our hearts for the sake of your kingdom and not our own. All in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh man.